Okay, it is a great pleasure to introduce the youngest and newest member of the mathematics department at CIMSTAT, Juan Manuel Burgos. Uh, he uh, obtained his PhD under the direction of Alberto Berkowski at UNAM. And uh, he is going to be speaking today about the relation between the uh, Costello and the Kramer Commons approach to quantum perturbative, quantum field theory. Juan Manuel? Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much to the organizers. It's really an honor being here today talking the memorial of Samuel Hitler. Um, First, I came up with with this idea of the connection reading the book of Kevin Costello. In the introduction, he he makes a review of all the approaches to quantum field theory that, that there, there, there are a lot of approaches. And he says that they are all very similar, but the kramer cones approach is uh, quite different from from his approach, and he wonders if there is a connection between those uh, approaches. So uh, I started to think, and, and I thought that, that there is a very natural connection between them, and I want to, to explain this connection today. Uh, well, first, the, the introduction, how, how we think in, in perturbative quantum field theory. We start with, let's start with the most simple setting of all that is a compact Riemannian manifold and an action. That is the, the, kinet the kinetic term and an interaction. Um, well, we assume heuristically the existence of a Lebesgue measure in the space of, of fields and define the, the partition function. It is a, a Feynman integral, completely ill-defined. It doesn't exist mathematically, but uh, physically uh, they use it all the time. Uh, in quantum field theory, the concept of, of measure is with correlation functions. Quantum field theory is, after all, uh, a statistical theory. So, in statistics, all we, we can do is uh, correlations of measures. Uh, this is the this is the endpoint function. And following following Polchinski, this, this is this is what 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 Costello is explains very well in his book, we find the concept of an effective action. In, in this way, to have this relation in here, this is the one we are looking for. To have an action that only looking at energy levels uh, lower of, of some fixed energy level fixed by the, the, the instrument that I have to, to measure give us the same the same uh, correlation functions. Well, all, all of this is well defined because of this. And we can think of the original action as describing the system at, at infinite energy useful to have this picture in mind. This is the energy scale and at infinite energy I have the my my action my original action S and we have at finite energy these effective actions. Uh, th there, is, there is one problem that the way we define it is, is still ill-defined. It is not math mathematically, it is, it is 
not a definition yet. So instead of doing that, instead instead of, of relate the effective action with the original action, what we can do is to relate the effective actions as a flux and and look for a rule to get the effective action at lower at lower energies from the effective action at, at lambda. And this could be this flux will be the renormalization group flux. But uh, Costello describes it in, in, in a more uh, simpler way that is taking the kinetic term, the term away. And so, uh, after some simple calculations, we have this expression here, and now this is completely well defined. And this is the renormalization group equation. The, the way to calculate them is uh, in a sum of stable connected graphs. A stable graph is a pair, that is a, a graph and a function from the vertex of, of the graph to the positive integers. Uh, these guys here are calculated following the Feynman rules of the theory. Is if I have a graph like this, I have rules that we associate some functionals to the vertex and propagators to the internal edges and, and we get a number. It's simply as that. Well the genius the genius of a graph is the 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 loop number very number and the sum of all the genes of the, of the vertex and uh, that way the group renormalization is written this way here well uh, how how Costello writes uh, all this stuff uh, Costello framework the the space of interactions will be the completed, completed symmetric algebra over the dual of, of the fields. Uh, we, can think, we can think in formal power series. That, that's all what it is. And well, we need uh, some, some more ingredients that is to take formal power series in this algebra in the in the h bar in the Planck constant uh, bar, we define the the O plus to be the uh, to, to be the ideal of this algebra that whose terms modulo h bar are at least cubic. Uh, here I, I will consider the a genus zero the zero one and two valent vertices uh, will be zero physically it makes sense because uh, a genus zero uh, a zero valent uh, vertex a, a point can be one uh, and, and the and the one valent vertex 
can be absorbed into an, an observable constant and the other term is absorbed in the mass term in the m squared term so uh, physically it makes sense to get rid of this of, of these terms in here and combinatorically this means that I only need to consider uh, at uh, from from three valent vertices and and so forth for example these vertex here are allowed a genus one vertex with uh, a two valent genus one vertex allowed a one valent one genus vertex allowed but it is not allowed a vertex like this or like this or a point that's the way I will construct my, my Feynman graphs uh, we say that that the functional or in physical terms the interaction is local if it can be written this way where the i, j are differential operators we, know, we denote the space of local interactions like this and the idea behind of local interactions is that I can write the, the original action in terms of the integral of a Lagrangian in space-time theories this is very important because it assures that the theory will be causal, that I will have uh, causality, that causality will not be violated. Uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things in Costello's framework is that instead of using the energy parameter that is uh, a sharp cutoff, we will see this in, in, in a moment, he uses the, the distance parameter that is a smooth cutoff it defines it uh, as follows consider the heat kernel of the of the kinetic quadratic form it, it, looks, it, it looks like this and define the propagator in, in this way the the inverse of this propagator is to integrate from zero to infinity so integrate from a small epsilon to L is to take a regularization of the propagator it will be needed to, to calculate uh, loop diagrams in, in Feynman diagrams Well, it, it is clear why, why we say it is smooth. It is smooth along the parameters epsilon and L, in difference with the, par with the propagator in, in the energy parameter that looks like this. This is, a, this is not at all continuous. Continuous in the, in, in, in the parameters. Well, this is Costello's definition of a perturbative quantum field theory. It's a flux, as, as, as I was saying before, it's a flux from, from the distance parameter to, to interactions or, or functional of the fields, such that it verifies the renormalization group equation and verifies a locality action. This locality action here is the is, is one of the main reasons why Costello's why, why Costello preferred to use the the distance parameter instead of the energy parameter. Uh, well, you know the set of the the infinity as a set of all perturbative quantum field theories, and the n as a set of perturbative quantum field theories uh, modulo h 
n plus 1, I forgot to write that there, and, and it turns out that it is the inverse limit of all these uh, field, field theories in here. And Costello's theorem is that uh, the relations between all of these perturbative field theories modulo h n plus 1 is that one is a principal fiber bundle of the other with structural group, the abelian group of local interactions in the fields. The T is zero, it's a principal no, this I just copy and paste this from <coughs> T zero is in a in a canonical way um, isomorphic to the to the abelian group of local interactions that I have that restriction on the, <coughs> the trivalent vertices. And given a renormalization scheme that I will define it in a moment, all perturbative quantum field theories are in rejection with local with local interactions. This is exactly what the, the, the view that a physicist or of a quantum field theory that as, as a local interaction. But it is interesting to note that <coughs> to make the correspondence we need a renormalization scheme. So Costello description is uh, is very satisfactory because it is uh, canonical. It doesn't need any renormalization scheme to and any any concept of of counter terms so far to to define what a perturbative quantum field theory is <coughs> well the the renormalization scheme is is, is the following thing Consider the the subspace of the infinite differential functions over the interval zero one that has a limit when the parameter goes to zero. And then a renormalization scheme will be just a complementary subspace of this subspace in here. Denote by 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 seeing the projection. And observe that if I have a, a functional of the fields or an interaction, then if we consider L as fixed, then I have this, um, this functional in this space in here. This will be important at the last of the talk. So I want to put some emphasis on, on this. Here is where the epsilon parameter lives in this part in here. Um, well, another theorem of, of Costello, the one, in fact, this is with this theorem he proves he he theorem he previous theorem. That given a renormalization scheme and a, and a functional, there is a unique family of counter terms such that this limit in here exists. Recall that if I don't have uh, counter terms, in general, this limit won't exist because of of, uh, of loop diagrams and the infinites they give. The way to calculate these counter terms is, uh, is an inductive one. We, we put the lexicographical order in, the, in n0 times n0 and we do the following induction. 
at first sight uh, at first sight the the induction involves involves to take account on on some non finite ordinals because of of the lexicographical order but we we don't have that problem because at each level I just have a finite amount of diagrams. So I never fall into into that problems and, and this induction here is, is well defined. Um, well let's move on to the to the Kramer Combs approach. Kramer-Cross approach is totally different from Costello's one, <coughs> and, it, and it involves uh, a connected, connected B algebras. A B algebra is, is the following thing. This is a B algebra. First of all, it is uh, an algebra. That is, we have an, an associative product. This is the multiplication, the product. Associative to say that this diagram commutes. The same thing with the co product. Algebra. 
the space of linear morphisms, of linear transformations, is an associative algebra. And we say that a B algebra is connected if we have a core radical filtration. That is, I can express the B algebra in this way. If I have a, a convolution inverse of the identity, we say that the B algebra is in fact a Hopf algebra. One of its properties is that the the set of group-like elements is, is a group and well, wh why, why it is important to consider connected B algebras because of this fact that the space of linear morphisms that take the unit to the unit is a group under convolution as a, corollary, as, as a corollary, every connected B algebra is a Hopf algebra. Uh, in particular, no, in particular, no, an, an, another proposition. If the <coughs> algebra is commutative, the set of characters is a group under the convolution. And moreover, the, to calculate the convolution inverse of, of a character phi, it's just to compose it with an uh, antipode. This is to say that the non-commutative analog of a group is a Hopf algebra in, in non-commutative geometry. Uh, well, Kramer comes renormalization. Uh, it, it is based on the Birk of the composition that is a, a Birk of the composition is a pair just that for every morphism that take the unit to the unit I have a couple of morphisms that also take the unit to the unit and in the augmentation ideal they go to the to the subspaces A minus and A plus and this is the two and three are the main important properties. And why why do we, do we care about connected B algebras and not directly a uh, Hopf algebra? Well, because in a connected B algebra, for every linear morphism that take the unit to the unit, I have a unique Birk of the composition. It is given by these relations in here, and and phi bar is the Bogoliubov map, also called the R bar map. Moreover, if I is commutative and phi is a character, then I can assure that the Birk of the compositions, the, the composition will be a pair of characters. Why, uh, well, um, why Birk of the composition is essentially renormalization? Because, um, for example, take a uh, quantum field theory, calculate its Feynman rules, and it gives you a map that for every for every graph, you will have. Uh, you, you will have an element on the on the algebra you are evaluating but you always will have infinities because of, of loop diagrams so what you do you regularize it you put some parameter to regular to, to, re, to regularize the integral the regularization could be cutoff regularization, Pauli Villars, dimensional regularization, or whatever. And, and you eventually will fall in this situation. H is the Hopf algebra of graphs, I will describe it in a moment, the, the Kramer Combs Hopf algebra. And you will have this 
this algebra of your original algebra A and Laurent polynomials in the regulator. So, uh, at the end, what you want is to take the regulator uh, to go to zero, but for that limit exists to, to assure that the existence of that limit when the regulator when the regulator goes to zero, you take the bulk of the composition of this character and you evaluate the limit in in the in the plus character. This is this is the minimal scheme. There are, there are interesting remarks that if you take the, the, the triple decomposition with A minus the whole algebra and A plus zero, then you have that, that the previous result that every phi, every transformation that takes the unit to the unit is invertible. And if you take the, the case when the algebra is the Hof algebra itself and, and phi is the identity, you have that S is a counter term map. So uh, how a physicist sees uh, the antipode in a Hof algebra, well, he thinks in counter terms. Well, finally, the Kremkron's the Kramer Combs algebra is defined as the polynomial on the as the polynomial algebra on the on the set of connected graphs with legs and and this is the coproduct. This is the the, the primitive part and and in what follows uh, we need to take care not only of subgraphs, but in the in the inclusion, where they are where, where they are included. Well, going back to Costello frame frameworks again, what we had was a character from the Kramer Cohn's algebra to this commutative algebra in here. This is where the epsilon regulator lives. And a renormalization scheme that was to choose a complementary subspace of the space of function that has a limit when the regulator goes to zero, induce in a trivial way this decomposition here. This will be my A minus and this will be my A plus. So we fall exactly into this situation in here. Uh, I have an algebra with a vector space decomposition in A minus and A plus. I have uh, my, my character, my Feynman character. So I will have uh, what the Kramer Cohn's algebra is a connected B algebra, so I will have a unique perk of decomposition. But to take the perk of decomposition, I need to to define another product. Not not to take the not to take the the product of of M. The, the, sorry, the M product, the, the product of the of the algebra A, as in here, but to take another product, I I will need an operator. That's why to define this operator, that's why I needed to be very precise in these inclusions in here. Uh, I, I I will draw the the operator. Insertion. For example, consider 
that I have um, my algebra in there, and this is this is the the Kramer Cohn's algebra, and suppose that that I have a graph like like this. Uh, 
Costello has replaced uh, a huge BPH zeta argument, always used by physicists, just with two or three lines of argument. It is it is quite amazing. And, and well, we have a with this connection, we have a short proof why these things that quantum field theory one students uh, do all the time, why it works, why it gives local counter terms after all. It is, it is not obvious at all. It is not obvious why it gives local counter terms and why th these counter terms are independent of, of L. And another comment is that if you if you calculate uh, the counter terms separately, if you have some symmetry in the theory, for example in Young Mills that you have a gauge symmetry and perturbatively per perturbatively it 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 condensates in the PRST symmetry. Um, in general, each diagram, it, each particular diagram, will not have that symmetry. But the sum of all diagrams, that is this counter term here, uh, they they will restore the symmetry. And and that's important. That's how, if you work in a formalism, that you have to work with each diagram separately when we when you want to gauge theory it is very difficult it is very difficult to formalize and in Costello's framework it is uh, quite natural um, he he do it with a with a battle in Wilkowski formalism he he defines uh, an effective battling Wilkowski equation so it's, uh, it's 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 very beautiful indeed so that's it thank you very much And then 
you have two inclusions, uh, one in here and the other in here. So I put A and B. So you will have A, B, and B and A. So to calculate the counter terms, you do the Bogolyubov map. And it turns out that it is to calculate the counter the, the counter terms you put the counter term map in the left. So this will be like this the Omega minus it will be minus the Feynman character. I, I will I will draw it this way. Counter term for this diagram is calculated by minus a diagram uh, minus this diagram with this insertion. That's why I needed the not the, the just the product, I needed the, the operand insertion I think it's a plus in here
Any other questions? Sorry? Is the co product there co community always? Uh, no, I, I don't know if he's, he's always co community, but. But with the, with the new one, we define. I, I guess it is it is not co commutative. So as a hop algebra it's neither commutative algebra or co commutative. No, commutative it is because uh, because you're the the algebra side you're just defining it as as the, as polynomials. So uh, it is is in the algebra side, it is it is very simple. The interesting part is the uh, is the cos side. So it's some kind of a dually resolved in algebra. Uh, yes, yes. Actually, there are approaches where they instead of using the coproduct, they use uh, a Lie algebra bracket. Um, they they take the dual and they do exactly what what you're saying. What are the primitive elements? What do they look like? The primitive elements are just the one loop diagrams. Oh, okay. And they are also the generators on the algebra side. Uh, yes. Outstanding in computing with um, Hopf algebras that was polynomial algebra on one side and non commutative or, or non co commutative with Sam. Uh, co commutative in the algebra side and? So uh, commutative algebra but a non co commutative oh, okay, co algebra. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, yeah, uh, you know, his uh, work with the steam rod algebra way back in the 60s mm -hmm. that was really algebra about uh, Hopf algebras of that sort. The steam rod algebra is an example of a Hopf algebra that has this property too. Okay. Any other questions? Well, we thank the speaker again.